my big uh, my big ESLQ in the ground. That's the mother tree of all the trees you've seen. This is flowered, but it hasn't fruited. And then of course, Ray Bayer, his, I, you know, his is fruited before mine, although I grafted it from this tree. Wow. You know, people fruit them before me. How does that work out? Huh? I'll tell you how it works out is I've got thousands of trees and these guys got a hundred trees. And I remember back when I only had a hundred trees, it, it was easy to maintain and take care of everything. Then once you get thousands of them, then it's like, you forget about this, you forget about that and you keep them alive, but they're not as good as the guy who has 10, 20, 100 trees. Quality, quantity, you know, that whole thing. So, the detail, yeah, less numbers, mean, yeah. I'm starting to learn you can always do better. Don't overplant. Just go with a, a number that you're comfortable with and try to keep that happy, and you'll keep plants happier, fruiting faster, than if you try to overdo it. This is that hybrid, the, the red Jablo trunk floor hybrid. It just looks crazy. And the rats chewed a giant hole into the trunk and it's healing right over. See that? They handle wounds so well. At the very base, there's a hole in it. They swallow them up like the blob. This is another hybrid that was selected here. Trunk of Flora and the red crossed again. So wow. these are siblings. You see how different they look the last one you saw? Oh, but, so this is a brother sister yeah exactly okay and then there's another one that's related to it right there the third one and that's another hybrid of red and trunk of flora distant cousin wow yeah and then i got a cocktail tree with the red and the trunk of flora on it right here pardon the trash but if you look at the base like well first you look at the foliage you got this see how that looks and then on this side you got this look how much different two different trees it's a cocktail tree and uh, you see at the base, how do you see them grafted? This one, the red Jabuticaba, has fruited quicker. But you see how it's being outpaced by the trunk of flora on the right. It grows two, three times the rate. So it's like with citrus. You know, they do these cocktail trees. If you put a grapefruit or a pomelo with a lime or a lemon, the grapefruit takes over. So you can do cocktail trees. I've seen uh, my friend John Morton. He has an incredible cocktail tree this thing pictures don't do it justice it's got like 10 different varieties four or five of them are fruiting it's incredible it's on like a 50 gallon tree oh man that one there's plinia fetrantha esalq that's an acronym for like the university it comes from this is beautiful oh man this is as rare as it gets super rare crafted twice Oh, really? Another little pro tip. When you're grafting the Jabuticabas, if you have a big rootstock, like, you know, a five year old tree, and you graft multiple branches, it'll fruit faster than if you just top, you know, do one graft on a little seedling. I guess it's because the tree has more energy. But I've seen people that fruited them so much faster than me, and it's because they had, you know, grafted on. Oh, wow. Or just they'll take a side branch and yeah. pop one on, and they're already fruiting. And I'm like, what the heck? He got that. He got that cutting from my tree, and he's already fruiting it before me. John Travis Morton, yeah. all the time. The Ray Bayer, all the time, fruiting these before me. <laughs> Every time. This is a big old cambuca, plenty of edulis. And you can see it's peeling like crazy at the bottom. I love how it peels. And then just look at the all the colors on the bark, you know? It's like camo, you know? Nature's camo. Imagine the pants, the, the Jabo camo pants. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, I love that. This thing is huge. It's big. Pretty. I've seen that I, I saw you sell one that was like two foot for like, like 500 bucks. 500 yeah. bucks. This is like a few thousand dollar specimen, oh, huh? Man. Yeah, there's no bad. They don't, there's no, you know who's got some big ones they used to have for sales? Excalibur. I don't know if they'll sell them. I guess that's the, you know, oh, you oh. had them for like 1500. Do you go to, you go to ask it and they say, oh, we don't think that's for sale. But yeah, some <laughs> big ones, man. This is one from Jim West in, uh, where's he at? In uh, Ecuador, is it? And um, Plinia. Yasuni, you know, I think that's the varietal name. I don't think it's the species, but this thing is hard to grow and it keeps dying back, but you see it's got new growth coming out. So I think I've got it over the hump and I might be able to keep it alive. This thing's like two or three years old. That come from a seed or a small plant? Seedling, a seed, okay. yeah. 
Plinia Yasuni. Grafted Plinia grandifolia. They call it Jabuticaba tuba, which you know the fruit. Is, the fruit isn't isn't really huge. It's large, but uh, the leaf is really big. And when you break this leaf off and smell it, it's got a really nice aroma. Let me see if I can. I don't know if you can. I can hand it to you Scratch to smell. And sniff. But it's got like just a nice aroma to it, almost citrusy, almost. But um, mm. I love to crush the leaves and smell them and compare them. You can learn a lot that way. You know, you definitely can. I've been here since I believe 2015, basically. Okay. So going on like five years now. How long you been collecting? I've been collecting since I believe 2005. Okay. I think I first learned about the Jabuticaba in 2007 in uh, Charles Boning's book, uh, Florida's Best Fruiting Plants. I read that book and it just kind of blew my mind. And it had everything spelled out for you. The deep, like the ratings of the fruit, five star flavor, five star cold tolerance, heat, you know, but uh, after reading that book, I really wanted more information. And I had been to Larry's house and seen that what I read in the book wasn't really quite what was going on in real life. And um, there was a book that came from Brazil called Brazilian Fruits and Cultivated Exotics by Harry Lorenzi et al. And this book to me was like a treasure map. I bought it from Fruit Lovers Nursery. They sold them for like $89 at the time. They're out of print now. So they're wow. worth like, the book's worth like 300 bucks now. Wow. So first off, the book was a good investment. Second off, that thing was like a virtual treasure map. All these fruits I'd never seen before that I didn't see in the nurseries that I knew probably had some potential. And this was new info. All these varieties of Jabuticaba spelled out for me. That thing, I read that thing every day front to back. I mean, I'm talking for two years. The same book. I just read it over and over and over. And um, I'm really glad I did. Yeah, I <laughs> it, it really put me, yeah, a, and it introduced me to all these people. I know one of the authors now. The second book's come out, Frutas No Brazil, is the updated version. It's available as an ebook in English, but the, 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 the text, the paper, you know, the actual book is only in Portuguese. It's pretty easy to read, but that book is the updated version of the old blue book, the first one I got, the, the, and it, the, the, the new black book is just treasure map, man. Treasure map. And uh, they actually put me in the acknowledgements. So for me, as someone who is reading that book and being so inspired by it, to be in the updated book and the acknowledgements, you know, for me, I was like, hey, mom, look at that. You know, I showed it <laughs> off. I had some people, look, there's my name, man, I'm somebody. But anyway, it, so it sounds like I'm gonna have to find the links for these books on eBay and put them in the description, huh? Probably. I, I, They're available. Yeah, the black one is. It definitely has an ebook. It's worth it to snatch it as an ebook and go through the Plinias, the Eugenias, the Garcinias, the Anonas, and they got some money in that book. Wow. Okay. Oh, there he is, Flying Fox Fruits. You also Florida. Got, you got Anestor who passed away. Rest in peace. Wow. And then you got Luke on there. There's a bunch of people. Uh, going to Mexico? Yeah, Luke, Flight Reracker. Then you got Charles Novak is on there somewhere. Where is he at? Charles Novak, nice. Chris Rollins. Bunch of cool cats. Sweet. This is Mircearia dubia. And we got a Camu Camu Farms out of Louisiana that's actually growing these commercially. I think the first people in, in uh, you know, America. What? So yeah, he's growing these things. And he's got them in Louisiana of all places. Ridiculous. I don't know how he's doing it. Is it greenhouses? Greenhouses, but he said he's got them through the winter somehow without even, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but the guy is growing them and he's got them fruiting and he's about to go into production to sell. I didn't want, I just grow it for fun, you know, to taste yeah. it. But these have actually fruited. They're like eight years old now. It took like, you know, seven years from seed. They hate high pH. They need low pH. So that's, and the leaves always look a little burnt up. You know, the old leaves, you see how fried these look? That's just kind of typical of what they do. As long as you got some new growth coming out with some color, you're good. Anyway, you can see how tall these are. 
And there's some weird brown scale that hits these. That doesn't hit any of the other Jabos, you know what I mean? Weird brown scale. This here is a rare one, a Nona Salzmanii. I think they call it like beach sugar apple. That's like the translation from Portuguese. Heat tolerant, not cold tolerant. Maybe a couple degrees more cold tolerant than like a guanabana. This one's grafted onto a Nona Montana, the uh, mountain soursop. That is the best combination for the rootstock. I had one given to me as a gift from Harmadim. It was grafted onto pond apple. And when that tree got cold, the rootstock went dormant. This is evergreen and it was still going and it just died. But the tree was beautiful and fine, but the one next to it grafted on Montana, which is also an evergreen, perfect. You can see the graft, the graft unions are just butter, smooth, you see it? Like there's, there, there's the, you know, that's the union. Yeah, there's another one grafted. This tree was grafted from this tree and it's grown almost to catch up, you know, as big as the mama. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Big red sugar apple, Anona squamosa. This one was from Noel Ramos. A little fruit about to fall off, that's typical. But you see it's got some set right there. It's in a pot. Delicious fruit, real soft. Reminds me of the Lisa Atamoya. That's from Wayne Clifton. That's a Peruvian purple sugar apple. This is one from Luke Vleracker in Mexico, and I got it from Ed Self, who I owe a lot to. Ed Self out of Texas, a great fruit collector, great human being, S gave me this tree. And it, it, it makes like a, a, a custard apple that's bumpy, red, and it has like protuberances, like, you know, bumpy. It's kind of interesting. I, and some people think that that's a hybrid maybe of a sugar apple and a... You doing any hand pollination with these? Or? Nah, I'm just no. too lazy. These, okay. these are a lot to keep up with, man. Okay. I, I used to collect the Anonas more and deal with them more and lately I've kind of just not been able to keep up with them. It's not, some of them are good for container culture, like the sugar apples, but like, you know, some of them are not. They just need more root space and they're, they're short-lived trees, soft wood. There's certain things that I don't like about it from my personal growing, but the fruits are my favorite. Anona, the flavor, it's amazing, I love it. This is um, Anona Macroprofilata. It used to be Anona Diversifolia. Elama, the Elama from uh, South America. El Salvador's got some good ones. I've heard, you know, all throughout the, even Mexico's got them. Ton of variation on this. I saw a presentation by Harmadim. So many varieties. So many colors, some are pink on the outside, I'm sorry, not on the outside, well slight pink on the outside, but pink on the inside, vivid pink, some are white, uh, just beautiful fruit, delicious fruit. The flavor reminds me of a guanabana and a nona reticulata mixed together, like a custard apple a soursop. Wow. Yeah, I really like them. The fruit when it's ready, it splits and then you have to take it and it, like it forms a callus over the split and then it softens and ripens and you eat it out but this is grafted onto itself, onto and, itself. and it's a variety called uh, uh this is genova red they, i think it's pronounced henova red pretty new growth i think there's flowers coming if i if i wait one there's like one coming out right there you see that little jalapeno pepper it's got purple flowers beautiful purple flowers and you can see why they called it diversifolia because it's got the diverse foliage. You see the little, the little funky little petals it has that little thing right there. That's why they used. To, that's why the species name used to be diversifolia. This is a um, atamoya, but Whoa. it's it's got mostly sugar apple genetics. Uh, it's popular in Taiwan. It was popular. It, I, I forget where it was selected exactly. I think it was selected in uh, Thailand or something like that. It's called Pet Pak Chong, probably mispronounced it. It's one of the most productive varieties I've, I've had. And the fruits get huge. It does not like the cold, it hates the cold. It really hates the cold. Fruit Please go inside in the winter. Yeah. Okay. The fruit is big and it's got a really firm flesh. Like, you know, sugar apples are real soft. This yeah. is like chewy almost. Huh. Yeah, people really like this one a lot. You know, they want the tree. Um, Custard apple here, Anona reticulata. A lot of people call it Anona squamosa a custard apple as well. There's a lot of confusion with the names on these where people say, oh, I got a custard apple. 
you're like, oh, custard apple, I got a custard apple, you know, it's like all these different places and islands have a different name for it than the people in, you know, Puerto Rico, it's different than Jamaica, different than Mexico. So if you learn that, if you learn that botanical name, you're going to be that much better in being able to relay to somebody what you have and not collect the same thing twice and confuse somebody. But this is Anona reticulata and that's what I call a custard apple. And this is a variety I call Kimber Red. It was brought to me by a friend named John Kimber and it makes a beautiful red fruit. It's fruited in a little 15 gallon pot. Wow. So it, this is a nice little tree, I love it. Some decent little sugar apples on this red here. There's, I don't know if you want to show it, but there's like four or five set. It's kind of hard to see from your angle there, but I might be able to oh, bet. I see him. Yeah. That's a big red, grafted big red sugar apple. Anona squamosa. Spondius purpurea. I like this fruit a lot. It reminds me of almost like an apple with strawberry, the flavor. And you can eat the skin. It's got a big seed in it. They're not the biggest fruits in the world. It doesn't like the cold, but you can keep these in a pot for, for so long. And, and the cuttings are really easy to root. So just root cuttings and just, you know, if you think one's getting too big, maybe sell it or pack it back and but they, they can be root bound no problem the fruit's delicious man I, I really like it yeah the trick is with them though is don't pick them too late if you let these get too too ripe off-putting flavor oh it changes the flavor really. oh yeah if you get them when they're just turning red and they're not like fully fully deep dark red they have just a really nice flavor this here is Garcinia brasiliensis and that same one that people call gar called Garcinia Intermedia. Um, I think the uh, Portuguese or Brazilian name is uh, Basupari or, or something. You know, they call like 10 different fruits Basupari, okay. but lemon drop mangosteen is like the common uh, American name. This one, I believe came indirectly from Anestor, rest in peace, uh, a great fruit collector from Brazil who indirectly, I never met the guy, I'm friends with him on Facebook, but I have a lot of plants from him that I got from people that got them from Anestor. And so this, you know, he kind of lives on, you know, it's uh, very sad. He, he, he you know, passed away in a, in a car crash and just last year. And it's just, but we, we think about him, he still lives on. He's made a huge impact on the world. So this is awesome. kind of Anestor right here. But yeah, look at this thing, it's crazy. It, it, it fruits so much. You know, you see you got fruit on, flowers coming. This is planted in the ground. It's probably like 10 years old. It fruited from seed in like five years. But the fruit is loaded with like antioxidants. Fruited from seed in five years. Yeah, it can fruit wow. quick. It can take three years. I got one out in the field that only took three years. And it's only like three feet tall. So you can fruit this in a pot. You can, How's the cold hardiness? Uh, about like a mango. Okay. But you know what? I let this thing completely ice over. It was completely covered in ice. You know, like the, 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 green, the greenhouses blew open with the hurricane. So the covers was off, and I just let the sprinklers run, and man. It, you don't eat the skin on this one, right? You can, yeah. You can. It's just not, you know, it's not exactly the best tasting for everybody, but you, you'll acquire a taste for the skin. Mmm. Super sweet. Whoa, what do you got over here, dude? A little double trouble. This is just the red, okay. and I planted these for production to sell the fruit. And I did, I have been selling the fruit, but they fruited really well during the winter time. And now that it's like, you know, in the greenhouse, it thinks it's the summertime, they're shutting down. down but yeah. you still get one little fruit here, you know, we'll take what we can get. So one fruit is kind of weak for these. I mean, usually it's- Oh, these are covered all over with fruit. Crazy, yeah. Let's just show you how wet these can be. But there is a flower or two. Yeah, but they're happier when they have ebb and flow. And these are reds? Reds. Okay. They want that transition. They don't want to so constantly. let them dry out a little. Don't let them stay constantly wet. Okay. Clinia Coronata Variety Hestinga. And it's spelled R-E-S-T-I-N-G-A. And that's like an area in Brazil that's coastal, a little salinity. 
So this can take a little bit of the coastal plantings and uh, higher pH. It makes a big fruit, not as big as some of the other Coronado varieties, but I've heard this is phenomenal and it fruits quite a bit. Uh, Ray Bayer has his fruiting, but mine haven't fruited yet. But I planted 10 of these in the greenhouse for fruit production to sell. So I think this is really nice because most Coronata varieties, 15, 20 years from seed. Wow. This one, five to eight years. So I'm all about this right here. Plinia Coronata variety, Hestinga. 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 Ross Sapote. This is a Ross Sapote from Charles Novak. Looks like it's got something knocked one of these branches back. We see some of the flowers coming. And this one has a rounder leaf. You see how it's got that oval kind of roundish leaf? which is kind of unusual. Most of the uh, Ross Sapotes have more of a lance-shaped leaf. And this is a close relative of the uh, Canistel. It may even be the same species, but uh, I really like the fruit on this. It's really good. And then this is the Eugenia Ligostrina. Eugenia Ligostrina yeah, yeah. from the Caribbean. I think this came from like Puerto Rico or the Virgin Islands. It makes a little red, dark red. They're sweet, they're nice. It's easy to grow in a pot. Can handle a mild freeze. It takes like three to five years to fruit from seed. This here is your finger sop. Myogin cylindrocarpa. And it's an anona. Distantly related to your sugar apples, your pawpaws, things like that. The fruit kind of tastes like a sweet potato, sugar apple. You know, it's, it's, it's a nice flavor. It's not the, it's a fun fruit. It's what I call a fun fruit. Something that you will eat, you'll enjoy eat it, but you're not gonna be, a, oh, I wanna go out and buy some finger sop fruit. You know, it's something that you grow in the garden. You, <laughs> you eat them when it's on the tree, you enjoy it, but it's not something that's like gonna feed the family or something like that. But I'm definitely sure it's got some kind of unique medicinal qualities. The flowers smell phenomenal. There's one right here. I don't know if it's got it. Yeah, you can kind of smell it. it. Smells like the sweet banana shrub. I don't know if you'll smell that, Pete, but it's, oh, scratchy it's, sniff. it's just yeah, it's got the sweet banana shrub kind. Mm. Yeah, right. So this thing's got a really like a fragrant. Yeah. This here, Maycock sapodilla, and I got this at a rare fruit sale. And you know the funny thing about this tree, I bought a bunch of Maycock sapodillas from Pine Island Nursery, and they outgrew this tree two, four times the pace. I don't know if it's the rootstock or whatever, but wow. this thing has stayed, this has been in the same 25 gallon pot for like seven years. And just consistently fruiting? Consistently fruiting, yeah. Wow. The fruit are not the largest fruit. You know, they get bigger than this, but this is super sweet. And you can eat the whole thing, skin and all. You know, sapodillas, you can do that. A lot of people don't know, know that. But anyway, I'm trying to see if there's any ripe. They get soft right on the tree. You mm. Scratch them or you just feel nah, them? No, I just feel them. But you can do like, yeah, you can feel they get smoother when they're ready, but I don't scratch them. We got one for the box. We you already got one? Yep, it, was, uh, it fell off yesterday. Working with Tropical Apricot, the uh, Dovialis Hybrid. You can root them from cuttings pretty easily. And um, I got this from Charles Novak. This used to be a lot more popular in Florida and it's kind of fallen off and people want it. It's kind of like a, a little bittersweet mealy, but it's tough as nails, handles flood, handles freeze. It's like a little peach hmm. and, and they're decent. I like it, good for jams, jellies. And cold hardy. Cold hardy. It gets thorns on it though, these wicked thorns in the, in the inside. So that's the downside, okay. That's a big downside. Echo Sweet Acerola. Ooh. I like this one better than the common B17 or the Florida Sweet. Florida Sweet. I, I guess it's just got a little bit more of a richer flavor. Hmm. But uh, don't you like how it's got the pink and then the light pink, so like multicolored flowers on it. Artocarpus lacucha. Oh. And I don't know much about it. It's like the Quimuck supposed to be a little more acid. It died to the ground when we went to 25 degrees and came back. Pretty. Pretty. Tough tree. Yeah. 
We got right here a super rare Plinia, Plinia rivularis. And it makes like a red, deep red fruit. Sometimes they're closer to a black color depending on the variety, super sweet. They say it grows down by the river. I think that's where the rivularis name comes from. Uh, cold tolerant, down to like maybe 22 degrees. It's never showed any signs of damage, although it is in a protected spot. Wow. But I mean, we didn't even get tip dieback when we went to 25. And uh, this one is maybe eight years old, no flowers yet but it's close, it's gotta be close. And usually when I want to see if a tree's close to fruiting, they gotta peel before they fruit, right? This thing's never peeled. It's big and it's never never peeled at all. So I'm like, you know, usually for me with the Plinia, I'm, it's gotta peel before it fruits, you know what I mean? So we're waiting on the peel. I guess. Wow. Beautiful tree though, I love it. Plenty of grandifolia again, Java Ticaba tuba. Ooh, Montingia calibura. I think they call it Capulin, Jamaica cherry. It's supposed to be loaded with calcium, and it's hard to find a fruit that's got calcium in it. You know what I mean? Some people say it tastes like cotton candy. Some people say, uh, Cereal milk, I've heard that from somebody. But if you look on the inside, it's loaded with tons of little seeds. See how those little, those are all little thousands of little white seeds. So anyway, Jeez. that's the typical variety. We'll pick some of these and then we'll show you. Th this is, you know, cold sensitive, doesn't like the cold. I guess I should have saved that one. There's another one there, just to show you there. Get a little bigger than that. I've seen pictures where they're native, like the Philippines or whatever, twice the size of that. Wow. You know, it's probably growing conditions more so than anything. These are practically invasive in Costa Rica. Oh, and even South Florida too. Yeah. And it's got a really soft wood. They just blow right over and the they'll root. send out suckers. But this is the rare. Thing's huge. Yellow variety, yeah. And they better size on that one, huh? Yeah, I've always heard about it and I've never been able to get one. And finally, one of my friends, uh, Lisa Rathmel, sent me a seedling. And I said, this is no way this is going to be right. It's a seedling. You know, I need a cutting. Yeah, it yeah, came yeah. up, came true to seed. Wow. Yeah, so I was really happy about that. I'm trying to plant the seeds on this. Uh, I wish I had more for the box, but at least we got one. This here is the Mircearia glazioviana, the uh, yellow Java de Caba or uh, Cabaluda as they call it. It's a delicious fruit, but a lot of people don't like it because it's thick skin that's not edible and big seed. But the flavor is exquisite. It almost is like apricot, coconut, mango. It's got a little bit of the pininess that, pininess that you'd associate with like a carry mango. Oh my gosh, I love, I love the way they taste. They'll fruit in a pot, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. this is a really fast growing Jabuticaba variety and it's kind of cold sensitive. It don't like temperatures down to like 28, it'll die back like a guava. And it fruits on the new growth, not the old wood. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but it's a good fruit. And there's some varieties of this I've seen where the fruit are getting big, big. Wow. So, cool. Oh, Balimbi. Balimbi. This is related to your car uh, carambola. Cold sensitive as all get out. I mean, if we get 50 degrees, it'll start dropping leaves. But I just bring it in and out and it's fruited for me actually. It's about three years old and this came from Adolph Grimmel's estate. I like the fruit, it's tart, but I've heard in Hawaii they're making like vinaigrettes out of it. Awesome pickle too. Yeah, so I, I like it just cause it fruits in a pot, it's beautiful and that's why. Pretty tree. Yes. Oh, look, we can add to our collection today. This is an old miracle fruit tree that got burnt back real bad. And, and you know, I let it dry out in the pot. And then I planted it out and it came back. So it's, this thing came back from sticks. I got a really big, pretty one over there that is, you know, never got damaged. And then this is a Jabuticaba I named after the town I'm in, Sanford, where it was first fruited, and also my grandfather, whose name is Sanford. This is Plinia fetrantha. It's flowering now, it's fruited. It makes big fruits. They're sweet. The tree is tolerant of freezes, you know, down to about 26 degrees. 
and it's tolerant of the heat. You've seen a lot of these Jabuticabas have shut down. I like the heat, yeah. This one's still just getting into it. So, and it, the leaves aren't burned either. It's out here in full sun. A lot of them would have leaf burn, you saw. This one's not burnt at all, so it can take the heat. Variegated Jabuticaba. I believe the variety is Sabara. And a friend of mine gave that to me. He got it from another friend, John Travis Morton. So, look for these guys on eBay. You know, I sell my trees on eBay, Flying Fox Fruits, but you got Barnhill Farms doing it. You got John Travis, uh, Morton and Sons Nursery. There's other people out there filling the demand for these because there's demand, they're just not supply. I can't keep up with supply, but there's other good people that I've taught what I'm doing. They picked up what I was putting down, they put it to work and they're making money. You could do the same thing. If you know, if you can grow Sabara, you could be growing, uh, grafting and growing. I got videos on how to do it. This is money, money. Love it. Oh, right here, we got a little grafted Plinia anomaly. A little smaller than the ones I've been typically selling on eBay because I'm giving this to Pete. Whoa. But yeah, knock off the little suckers and wait a little bit longer and you can unwrap the uh, graft or cut it with a knife but keep it in the shade, keep it wet. This is a rare tree. Dude, that's <laughs> exciting. Good luck with that. A new rare one for the collection, bro. Thank you, Whoa. yes. I'll put that in the shade for you. All right. Welcome to the uh, Flying Fox Fruit Buffet, dude. What do you got growing on here? Today, What's ripening? Today on the menu, we have Pitanga tuba star cherry served alongside a common black pitanga along with your uh, Garcinia brasiliensis lemon drop mangosteen of the superior variety along with your typical uh, uh, lemon drop mangosteens, a white Jabuticaba branca also with your yellow uh, Montangia and a typical pink Montangia miracle fruit to take the tart edge off uh, lemon guava, catli guava, along with a mecoc sapadilla that is just perfectly ripe. A couple red jabuticaba just to show them, and also a new hybrid, the first fruiting ever, jabuticaba of that variety. And um, we also have some uh, plinia anomaly today. Whoa, dude! All right, let's geek out. Let's hey. geek out. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about these two actually. What do you mean? Plinia possible hybrid of Grimmel and Red. Okay, okay. On the menu today. First to start off with the 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 uh, cap the sapodilla, because that's just sugar, you know, that's as high as it's gonna get. You know what I mean? Oh, so this looks like we're doing some scientific stuff here. What's going on? Mm -hmm. We're testing the bricks on these fruits to show the level of uh, total soluble solids or the uh, sugar content. So, you know, winemakers, beer makers use this type of thing. But lately I've been doing it to kind of categorize and make a refractive index for all the fruits. Like, so, there we go. Ooh, ooh. So you might want 31.3 on a sapodilla? 31.3. That Whoa. That's a good one. Yeah. And we just zeroed this out. Yeah, he just Whoa. calibrated Oh, so that came from that sapodilla. That's totally off the charts. I never expected that. All right, Adam, thank you for the epic tour, bro. So let me ask you, like, what excites you about tropical fruits? Why collect tropical fruits? And how are people going to find you? Well, I'd say, first of all, thank you for coming out, Pete. I, I thought I was excited about growing fruit, but I think I I've got complacent over the years. And people like Pete bring that excitement out of me. You know, just get me so... He, 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 he gets so excited and it rubs off of me and I get excited. And then I remember what I'm doing is important. You know, sometimes we forget. But the reason I think that this is so special, it's able to connect you with people all over the world. You know, I've got friends all over the world and I'm sharing a meal with them. You know, that's one of the deepest rooted human things we can do. And you know, like it or not, we're sharing a meal, something to eat. And this is naturally grown food. This is a hobby that you can do if you're five years old or if you're 95 years old. And it keeps you going, it connects you with the earth. You know what I mean? And it, each fruit is a different nutritional or uh, medicinal plant that has quality that can boost your health or you know and it's really bridged the gap for me with age like I don't hang out with old people 
even genders. Like as a male, it's hard for me to make friends with older women, younger women. And I've made friends with a lot of women. Just we're friends because we share the passion of loving to eat this rare fruit. So I've got friends of all ages, friends of all genders, friends from all over the world, and we're just connected. And I go out in the garden and I look at a plant and I think about that person. You know what I mean? And so this is just, it's just not a hobby. This is not even a profession for me. This is a way of life. And I think more people need to get down with it. So. Sweet man, yeah. you're living the dream. Living the dream. And uh, you know what? I'm just a one man show and I can already read the comments. He needs to do this. He needs to hire this. He needs to. <laughs> I'm doing this because I love it. It's not necessarily for the money. The money's fun. I like to get some money. You know, I think about the money. But I grow, I'm just a guy who likes to grow rare fruit. I really just like to have something the next guy doesn't and to turn someone's head and make them say, damn, I wish I was growing that. Where the heck did he get that? I'm really just doing it for the glory for, for you know. So um, you can find me on eBay. I've been having a little trouble keeping up with email correspondence, all these questions and you get, you know, people need a lot of explanation with the rare fruit. They, it's, you know, you need to do a lot of explaining. So it's hard for me. I've tried to put a lot of the information I know out there just in videos on my YouTube channel, Flying Fox Fruits. Also on the Tropical Fruit Forum, you got a lot of stuff I've put on there. So you can search the Tropical Fruit Forum. Facebook, I got all my groups that are linked to my Flying Fox Fruits page on Facebook. I'm mainly selling on eBay through the auction process. A lot of these plants, I wouldn't have the nerve to ask for how much they're getting. I put them out there for a penny, so it's up to you to set the price. So I've had some sell for 860 bucks for a one gallon tree, the anomaly. And some people get a deal and get them for cheaper, but I put that out there for a penny. Wow. So. Uh, eBay is where to find me, Flying Fox Fruits. If you Google, if you search Grafted Plinia, Plinia, just search Plinia on um, uh, eBay, you'll find me and some other sellers that are really good from Florida. So check it out, please. Sweet, bro. Keep up the good work. I love the story. Pounder. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Thank All you. Right, bro. Thank you. All right, guys. I told you this was going to be an epic rare fruit stop, um, kind of rare fruit overload. Adam is doing some epic work here. I'm leaving with some new rareness, like those botanical names, whoosh, like kind of went over my head. Um, you know, every time I come here, I learn a new word, a new name. I see a new variety. So definitely all the links for Adam will be down below in the description. I'll probably come back for another video here at some point. Um, Adam does a lot with freeze drying fruit. I'll be making a video at my house here really soon with a lot of the different fruits that he's given me to try. So hold tight. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. Most importantly, pound dirt.